feels good to be back. Um, man, it's hard to it's hard to even focus on on what I feel like I want to share. So much awesome stuff came forth from you know Miss Glenna and, and Rod and in the just everything. Um, I, we're just in such a we're just in such an awesome time of of the Lord continually speaking and continually th- things are just changing so fast. It's really hard sometimes for me to um, plant and focus. You know, it's, it seems like as soon as I get one thing where I think I got it figured out, the Lord's already moving so fast. It, it, it's just, it's just wild. It's an excellent, exciting time to be alive. It's an excellent, exciting time to be walking with the Lord. And uh, I just want to take a minute and say thank all of y'all that, that took a minute and prayed for me. Um, Past week has been a nightmare on one hand, but on the other hand, um, God uses everything, uh, everything to, to love us, to teach us. Um, you know, He uses everything, everything for our good, for those that love Him and that are called according to His purposes. So, thank you guys for praying for me. Um, thank you, Father, for speaking to me, um, just for never given up on us. God, you're so amazing. So, uh, I do finally got a, my friend just came in, I finally got a a little title. Somebody's been asking me every single day for a title. (laughs) And what I wrote down was, created for a love relationship. Created for a love relationship. And I just want to, I'm going to give some some scriptures today, some passages, and, and, and this type of message is probably the most comfortable for me to deliver, and that is to um, tie life experience in with, uh, with his words. God has a way of um, you know, taking his words and tying them into our lives, and uh, w- when he does that, we come to a real knowing of who he is as our Father, as, as our Savior, and as our God. And uh, so, so these these messages honestly are kind of my favorite to deliver. Is when I can share the things that I've been going through, and he speaks to me, has a genuine conversation with me as we're going through them, and uh, just his grace, his grace and his mercy and his his faithfulness to himself. It's just it's it's astonishing. I just can't thank him enough. I can't thank you guys enough. You really knew and understood how much all of us are really interconnected and how your successes are important to the body and your failures also are important to the body. Um, you know, my, my failures are an opportunity for somebody else to shine or for somebody else to encourage me and, and your failures also are an opportunity for a brother or a sister to lift you up, to encourage you, to love you and uh, the, all of these things successes and failures are continually building up the kingdom of God. So I just, I don't know, I want to express my gratitude to y'all. I want to express my gratitude to God. So thank you guys. Um, the, the first passage um, that I want to talk about is going to be 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. And it's a really short and really sweet scripture. Uh, really short and sweet passage, and I hope that Lonnie can hear this. You know, it never ceases to amaze me <laughs> how the things we talk about in other classes, and even the opening prayers and the the worship songs that are picked, how everything all seamlessly ties together. So, First John uh, chapter four, verse nineteen, it says, "We love because He first loved us. We love because He first loved us." And uh, As I was putting this stuff together, the Lord really just started sharing his love with me. And uh, so I wrote a handful of things down, and this is some of the stuff that I wrote. To be loved by God is the highest relationship possible. It is the highest achievement, and it's the highest position in this life. You can think about that. The highest position, the highest achievement and the highest relationship possible is our love relationship with God. That's, that's it. I mean, if I was to sum up everything, 
it would be that. <laughs> um, out of this passage, we see that God himself pursues a love relationship with us. He takes the initiative to bring us into this love relationship. He created you for fellowship with himself, and that's the purpose of your life. A love relationship with God the Father. That's my purpose. That's your purpose. And how um, I so get sidetracked with thinking that my purpose is to prophesy. It is to teach. It is to work. It is to do, 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 do. It is to be disciplined. It is to pray. It is to work. Oh, how I so easily get away from the basics of my relationship with God is first and foremost. For out of my relationship with God, I can say out of your relationship with God stems every situation. It stems every blessing, every cursing, every benefit, and every problem all stems out of our love relationship with God. And not that I want to argue, but I would argue that point with anybody and everybody. Everything in this life all stems, good and bad, from our love relationship with God. Think about that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, with that being said, let me ask you guys a question. I love asking you guys questions. This is a question that I've had to ask myself. When I ask myself this question, It troubled me. <laughs> troubled me. So the question is, is really simple. If you were standing before God, you were standing before God the Father, our Creator, our Savior, if you were standing before Him, could you describe your relationship with Him by sincerely saying, I love you with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, with all of my strength. I'm just going to let you sit there and think about that for just a second. Now, I think that's funny because Rod prayed that a minute ago. <laughs> I haven't talked to Rod in a few days outside of, hey, how you doing? Thanks for praying for me. How's your health? And God the Father is ever so seamless in unifying and connecting us together. And it blows me away. So, I want to ask you that question one more time. If you were standing before God, you know, uh, there you are. I am standing before you. Can I describe my relationship with you sincerely, sincerely with all that I am saying, I love you with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul, and with all of my strength? I know that inside I want to say, absolutely, I do. But when I was 100% totally honest with myself, I came to a devastating answer. And uh, that answer for me was no. Right? <laughs> Even to say that out loud takes my breath away. Because that is not what I want. It's not what I want. And I'm not putting that on y'all. I'm just sharing with you guys a little bit of this last week that I've been walking with the Lord and in his mercy and his, his graciousness and in his unfailing love, he has taken a moment to share his heart with me. And I'm trying to share that with y'all. <laughs> so I had to answer no to that question. And uh, how did I come up with that? How did I come up with the answer no? Am I not better than that? You know what I'm saying? Am, 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 am I the guy that's supposed to have it all together? You know, I get to stand up here and teach. I get to teach over there. I get to talk about this. I get to encourage, lift up, edify. Hell, I also drop the ball a lot. <laughs> and how did I come to this answer? No. Well, um, you know, I, I know, I, I believe I'm still coming out of a fairly serious bout of sickness. Um, my head says, you're good but my body keeps showing me that I'm not as good as I think. And that's, that's humbling, because I like to think that I'm a fairly young man and I'm strong and 
I'm athletic and I'm mean and aggressive. I'm a bull. I'm a lion. Rah! And then the Lord's like, okay. <laughs> okay. He thinks that's funny and so do I. But, uh, oh. I believe I had the privilege of this experience of this sickness because of one simple act of disobedience. One simple act of disobedience is why I got the privilege of experiencing sickness. And this was a weird sickness. I know that this... Now, now this is tricky. I'm, don't, don't hear... Don't hear me. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that God made me sick. Okay? Don't hear that. Please don't hear that. That's not how the Lord rolls. <laughs> However, He does at times, depending on what we do, lift His hand of protection. Or I could maybe say it is sometimes I choose to get out from underneath of His hand of protection. Um, and it's just been wild from... from Three days of crazy high fever to crazy chills to, to, to upset stomach to, I mean, it's just been nuts. And to thinking that I'm well, to, to going back to work, to having to come home, to, and it just morphed into like ear infections in both ears and all these nasty weird bumps all over my head. They were called, what are they called? Nymph node, lymph nodes. I had bumps on me in spots that I didn't even know existed. And then, and then it went from that to a crazy bout of poison ivy all over me. And I mean, it just went wham, 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 wham. And, um, it was horrible, but it was a privilege to experience because in all of it, I never stopped seeking the Lord. Of course. The number one question was why? Why, 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 why? And he didn't answer me right away. And, uh, and again, I know that's really tough, tough to try to wrap your mind around that, wait a minute, the Lord allowed you to get sick? Is that, would you allow your kid to get sick? I think, well, not exactly, but after I've told my kids so many times, I do tend to let them make their own mistakes, and then they go, maybe Dad was right. You know, uh, but so I, I think, and um, I was told, I was told last, I was told Thursday, about a week and a half ago now, I was told Thursday evening, very specifically, do not do something. And at first I obeyed. It was no problem at all. No problem. You know, but something, something came across my plate, and I thought, I will do this. And in and an and instant, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, do not do that. And I thought, okay, I won't do that. And I went about my business, and, uh, and about an hour later, I decided to change my mind, and I will do that which I knew that I was told not to do. Very simple. And, and immediately in that moment, immediate, I'm telling you, immediately, it was like I went from being in the shadow of the Most High to being outside of his shadow of protection. And the enemy is always standing before the Father going, let me have him, let me have him, let me have him, let me have him, let me have him. And the Father is always going, no, no. You know, they're within my will. They're doing the things that I've asked them to do, and I will protect them. However, God is a gentleman. And when he gives us a, a, a commandment or an instruction, and we choose to disobey that, the enemy now has, unfortunately, a legal right to access us. And, uh, and that, I don't even like to say that, but I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know that that's true. That's true. When we walk hand in hand with the Father, the enemy has no access to us. When we take a few minutes to be selfish, <laughs> I was selfish, 
When I take a few moments to be selfish, now the enemy has access to something that which he did not have before. And uh, that was not fun. So some of you guys might say the Lord would never do that. And uh, I would tell you that Hebrews 12, 6 says, the Lord disciplines the ones that he loves. And he chastens everyone that he accepts as a son or as a daughter. Disciplines those he loves and he chastens those that he loves and accepts as sons and daughters. Do any of us maybe have a child or, or an animal that we love as a child? <laughs> and they do something and how the discipline changes. You know what I'm saying? When they were little kids, I almost like it better when they were little kids and they didn't get the option. They just received my discipline whether they liked it or not. And as they get a little bit older, they tend to reject or rebel against my discipline or my statements. Oh, how the Lord is constantly showing me that I'm not as mature as I think that I am. So uh, <laughs> with, with that being said, that Hebrews 12, 6, it says the Lord disciplines the ones that he loves and he chastises everyone that he accepts. I am still digesting. I got a chance to briefly share with Rod. I'm... I'm, I'm still digesting some of what I consider um, some words that he said that I consider just absolutely astonishing words of wisdom. And, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but three weeks ago Rod said, what the Lord will tolerate in the outer courtyard can cost you your life in the Holy of Holies. And I'm still working that out within myself. Um, because I like to think that a lot of us are on the same track with we want what the Lord wants. As as Miss um, Glenna just, just shared just a moment ago, we want all that our hearts can contain. We want the best that God has for us. We can say that actually verbally out loud and at the same time not fully understand that God's best for us isn't maybe what we think or maybe isn't what we know. And so, <laughs> it's just wild. You know, it, it reminds me of the story, it reminds me of the story in the Bible of, of the Lord inviting all these people to a wedding feast, and none of them show up. None of them show up. And he goes out into the streets, and he offers the same invitation to all these people in the streets, saying they come in. But here's the kicker, here's the funny thing about that. When they all come in, he goes, who are you and why are you dressed like that? Get out of here. How's that even work? He invited them in and then criticized them because they wasn't dressed for the wedding party? Huh. We all have an invitation to the wedding table, but not everybody's going to go to the wedding table. Some of us will watch from a distance because we're not really willing to conform to the image that God has set. You know, the be holy because I'm holy. We think that we are. We mean well. We think that we are. Um, but we really need to spend some time in our love relationship with Him. He shares things with us because He loves us. And this is what I'm learning. He, he told me to not do something because He loves me. And I thought He told me something because he wanted to, he wanted to be a party pooper. <laughs> he wanted to, uh, you know, stifle my mojo. He wanted to, you know, not let me have the fun that I thought that I needed to have. I thought, well, I'm going to have the fun that I'm going to have. And he said, "Okay, suit yourself, suit yourself." And I'm, I'm still uh, reeling from that. But I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, I wish I could convey how amazing his love is for us. I'm telling you, in this catastrophic failure, in this catastrophic disobedience, the Lord has made himself so real to me that I wouldn't even trade it. You know what I mean? I would not even, if I could go back and be obedient, I wouldn't. Now, I know that's, that's, that, sounds, that sounds crazy. That sounds crazy. But um, so I'm just really digest in what Rod said, you know, we, we all want this super, super close relationship, but, you know, we got to understand that 
God is a consuming fire. He is, he is a consuming fire. He is holy. He loves us. He says, be holy because I am holy. You know, we have the blood of Jesus. We have access to things. But are we going to utilize them? You know what I mean? Are we going to utilize them? Are we going to take the invitation that he extends? You know, and like again, I say we 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 all will say yes. Um, and I'm not I'm not you know I'm I speak to myself here. I'm not I'm not I'm not you know I say that God I want the best. I want to come into the fullness of your presence. As I would assume that most of my brothers and sisters in here want that also. But then. In a simple statement, the Lord asked me to not do something, and I proved, proved to him that I don't really want that because I was disobedient. And uh, that broke my heart, first of all. <laughs> has caused me to reevaluate some things, and it's caused me to... Um, I'm in the process still of of just evaluating and, and, and you know, re, re, rearranging my marbles or where I may want to apply myself at a greater capacity. And I can tell you what I'm coming to the conclusion of is that the capacity in which I want to rearrange my marbles is focused on my love relationship with Him. First, because I want all these blessings, all of us do, but we don't understand that these blessings are only a byproduct of our relationship with Him. That's all. The, all of this stuff, these, this glory that, that we want, these miracles that we want to see, are only a byproduct of our relationship with Him. There's nothing more, there's nothing less. We don't get that stuff without relationship with Him. We want that stuff without relationship with Him, though. If I could say that, I can't say that about y'all. You know what I mean? Um, so, <laughs> what I could get away with in the outer courtyard could kill me in the Holy of Holies. I have to really reconsider some things. Um, which, And that's not bad. It's not bad. It is always good to evaluate our walk with the Lord. Always. Always good. So, uh Doing what I want, when I want, how I want, it's okay when walking on the outer fringe of the Lord's presence. But for me to access the fullness of His presence, obedience is not an option. No, that's, un, that's off the table. I mean, is, is, again, is, is He my God? Am I His Son? Is He my God? Am I His servant? Is He my God? Is He my all in all? Is He... You know what I'm saying? Or, or do I, I know personally, sometimes I think that we get the, I get to rearrange that, and he's my servant, and I'm his God. And, and you're going to bless what I'm doing. And I know that sounds horrible to say, but that's just my actions sometimes speak louder than my words. <laughs> you know, I'm so confident that I spend time reading this word and praying this word and, and doing this stuff that I know that I know that I know that I am right. And he goes, eh, not exactly. Let me show you that I'm God still. And it's humbling. It's humbling. I, 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 it's, it's, it hurts, but it's humbling, and, it, and it's, it's just a readjustment, like a chiropractor adjustment, you know what I'm saying, and getting things back in. Back in uh, Hebrews 12.29, it says that our God is consuming fire. And this is also found in Deuteronomy 4.24. Our God is a consuming fire. You know, he, he is a holy, He is holy, and, and He will be true to Himself. He will be true to His attributes. And, and that's awesome. That is so awesome. So, uh, since this little, I'm still going through all of this awesome thing, I've since repented, and I've asked the Lord for forgiveness for disobedience. And um, I'm thankful for my wife, uh, I don't know about y'all, but there's nobody harder on myself than me. You know what I'm saying? When the Lord shows me I messed up, I feel like He forgives me, but I can't forgive myself. And uh, that's, that's something I'm working on. <laughs> uh, 
He's just so good. So I've since I've asked him to forgive me for disobedience, and in his mercy, this is this is crazy. All this, every listen, everything in our lives is orchestrated by God, good and bad, good and bad. And if we could really get that wrapped around, if we could really wrap our minds around that, we we would really do ourselves really good. I I met this guy, weird guy. He's not weird at all. He's awesome. His name is Zhang, J O N G Zhang Zhang Kim. That's some fluke weird thing. Now I'm in some Bible study with me with him, and and he's got my phone number, and and uh, and he gave me a call. And I mean, I really wasn't trying to talk to nobody. <laughs> you know, who wants to talk to somebody when you're sick? Nobody. So anyway, John reached out to me, left a message on my phone, prayed for me on my message. Um, just he, he and then at the end he prayed an Aaronic blessing over me. It made me feel so special and loved. That this guy doesn't even, you know what I mean? I don't know this guy from nothing. But he took a minute to pray for me. You know what I mean? Could you imagine a stranger praying for you and being genuinely concerned for your health? Um, and so, because he touched my heart, I guess I felt like I should call him. <laughs> and, uh, and I did call him. And through a conversation with him, the Lord brought out a principle to our remembrance, his and mine, and it's found in James 5.16. It says, Therefore, confess, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. For the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And I had no idea that I was going to spew my life issues on Mr. Zhang. <laughs> but I felt led to and was like, man... I'm sick and I feel like the Lord has showed me this is why I'm sick and this is what I did. And, and he took the lip. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fellow from a different uh, nas- nationality. And, you know, people that are, have different nationalities have different ways that they do life. Well, he took the opportunity to be very bold with me. And he said, if you don't mind asking, what did you do to sin against God? And I thought, well, how disrespectful. <laughs> and uh, little did I know, that's what I needed. It's what I needed because I had asked God to forgive me for what I I know what I did, and God know what I did, and and I know that His Word says, you know, that, that God is true and just. And if you ask, you know, Him to forgive you of your sin, He casts your sin as far as the east of the west, and you know, into the sea of forgetfulness, and all this cool stuff. And I don't have to deal with it no more, and act like it just doesn't exist. And the Lord's like, no. Nah. I want you to verbally say out loud what you did. And I'm like, ooh, uncomfortable. This is really uncomfortable. And so I told Zhang exactly what I did, verbatim, um, where I gave you guys just a vague message. I told him straight up, this is what the Lord told me to not do, and this is what I did, and this is how it happened. And and, And in that, I had no idea Zhang starts to come unhinged himself. And he goes, I just want to thank you for sharing that. And it's really speaking to me because, you know, I told the Lord that I would do this. The Lord shared something with me in my life that he wanted me to do. And I told him I would do it. I, com- I made a commitment to the Father. And then I have since under-delivered on my commitment. And in you sharing your story with me right now, feeling convicted. It wasn't my intent. <laughs> I wasn't trying to make you feel convicted. And uh, I'm telling you, the Lord has this way of just breaking down our walls, breaking through our lack of understanding, and just, he has a way of breaking out of the boxes that we put him in. You know, breaking out of my understanding of what I think I know about God in such an amazing way, such an impactful, such a personal, and, 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 and it makes himself so relational. You know, our, our sign out here in, at the church, uh, this blue sign, it says, you know, our, our, our goal is knowing God and making Him known. Well, you know what's funny is I can't make God known. God can only make Himself known through experiences with me. And so I can share my experiences with you as a form of testimony to try to get you to relate, but until God makes Himself known to you personally, I'm barking up the wrong tree. Isn't that wild? So, ah. Oh, um, you know, I got to share this with Zhang, and Zhang shared with me, and, and then the Lord, the Holy Spirit, brought to our remembrance, James 5.16, you know, confess your sins one to another, 
And he took a minute and he prayed for me, you know? And then I took a minute and prayed for him. And, and not that he's good or I'm good or he's bad or I'm bad, but that there was genuine concern for one another because sin causes a tear in our relationship with God. It causes us to no longer have full access, but only partial access. It kind of kicks us out of the Holy of Holies and back out into the outer courtyard. You know what I mean? And then a process has to happen in order to get ourselves back into a right standing with the Father. And so uh, shortly after this uh, conversation in prayer time, I mean, sh- I'm telling you, shortly after, it, it, it's, it's so amazing. Shortly after this conversation in prayer time with Sean, restoration of my health began. And then the Lord began to show me how my relationship with Him really is. And this is what He showed me. Um. If you guys are taking notes, if you can, jot this down, okay? One, two, three, four, five. This number is one, two, three, four, five. And on number one, write down, know him. Know him. K-N-O-W-H-I-M. Know him. Number two is love him. L-O-V-E-H-I-M. Love him. Number two is love him. Number three is believe him. Believe him. Believe God. Number four is trust him, trust God. And number five is obey him, obey God. One, two, three, four, five. One, know him. Two, love him. Three, believe him. Four, trust him. Five, obey him. Now, the Lord began to show me my love relationship with him. And in, 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 in this, he actually showed me this in my daughter and my son too. So, I mean, God is so multifaceted. I think that it's for me, and he is just showing me. He's showing me in my love relationship with him how my love relationship with my son is flawed. And he's showing me in my love relationship with him how my love relationship with my daughter is flawed. And that's always humbling, too. My goodness. (laughs) So uh, how it goes first is first, generally, I, us, we learn about God. And once we learn about God, we could say that we begin to know God. We begin to know Him. We learn about His character attributes, His traits, you know, what He likes, the things that He doesn't. So in our uh, our walk with the Father, as we begin to know Him, we come to love Him. Once we know His character attributes and His traits, which are generally totally opposite of what ours are, we go, huh, he really seems like a good dude. I think I want to love that guy. And so in our, in, our, in our journey to know Him, we actually come to love Him. Once we love Him, because we love what we think that we're learning about Him, we come to a place of believing Him. He starts to make these statements, and because we love Him, and we start to understand He wants what's best with us, we want to believe the things that He says. You understand? And once we believe Him, I come to trust Him. And it's, it's crazy how I get these things out of order a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um... I feel like I have to, I have to know all, or I have to have all this stuff perfect before I could really trust Him. Something the Lord's been um, a, a little thing, a little revelation that the Lord is rocking me on is Leviticus chapter, I think it's chapter nine, verse six. And of course, I got to go there um, just to just to read it to you. Leviticus chapter nine, verse six. Wow. Chapter 9, verse 6, and it says, And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear to you. That's pretty simple, right? Well, the Lord is rocking me on it, and he's, what he's doing is he's showing me in this one little tiny scripture, he says, When I do what he commands... Then he reveals himself to me. And I think he has to reveal himself to me before I can do what he commands. You know what I'm saying? Like, God, you're going to have to prove yourself to me. You're going to have to prove your worth. You're going to have to prove how amazing you are before I do anything you tell me. And he goes, not exactly. You do what I tell you to do, and when you're obedient, I reveal myself to you. You do what I tell you to do first, and then I reveal my glory to you. Can you, can you understand that with your children? Don't do this because I said so. But if they don't trust us, they don't do it. You get what I'm saying? So, 
First we know him, then we love him, then we believe him, then we trust him. And it's only once we trust him that we begin to move into number five. And that's I obey him. If I don't trust God, I don't obey him. (laughs) And, and, And so in this crazy week and a half of sickness, the Lord has been showing me a couple of things and and he's made a few statements that make me a little uncomfortable, honestly. So, uh, obedience is the outward expression of my love for God. You know, I, a couple of weeks ago, I don't even know how long it's been, but, but um, another one the Lord is just oh, constantly bringing up to my remembrance here lately is 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it says, This is love for God, to obey His commands and his commands are not burdensome. And to me, that's... When I read it, it sounds amazing, but when I actually think about it, it doesn't feel... It almost feels kind of restricting. Like, wait a minute. Now, you know, we can use this in the commands of the Bible, and I'm using this specifically as he told me something. You know what I'm saying? He, he gave me a command. He said, don't do that, and I went against it. And, and so, obedient. my obedience uh, is the outward expression of my love for God. All of us, I, can, I feel confident that I can say that. Your obedience to God is your outward expression of your love for Him. Okay? And, um, and He showed me this. This was, this, was one of the, this was one of the ones that I'm still a little squeamish about. He said, if I, me, if He said, Scott, if you've got an obedience problem, you've got a love problem. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> he said, if I have an obedience problem, I have a love problem. You know, and I can go again back to 1 John chapter 5, 3, this is love for God, that I obey his commands. If I do not obey his commands, do I love him? Just a thought. You know, just a thought for me. I'm not, I'm not putting this in y'all. I'm, put, I'm just sharing my experience over the course of last week and a half um, to some of the things that the Lord has been showing with me, sharing with me. He showed me, he said, if, if I have an obedience problem, that's number five, then I have a love problem. And then he took me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, and he said, whoever does not love does not know God. That would be number one. You know, when I wrote down number one was, you know, I begin to know him, but 1 John 4, 8 says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And so he took me through this this little, I don't know why, <laughs> he took me through this little one, two, three, four, five of know him, love him, believe him, trust him, obey him. And he said, when you don't obey me, it shows that you don't love me. And I'm like, that's not true. I love you. I love you. And he goes, well, your actions are maybe saying a little bit different. And I'm like, well, I love you. Just maybe not with all my heart. Maybe not with all my soul and all my strength. Just a piece of it. And he goes, that's really not going to cut it for me not going to cut it for me. That's, I mean, I could only, what if I only love my wife with half? You know, I wanted to love this person over here. It wouldn't show, would you? She would not stand for that, let me tell you. <laughs> or, or, you know, think about you husbands in here. You know what I mean? Would you allow your wife to have an, a side dude? No. A side <laughs> Sorry. And that's how, that's how God is. That's how our Father is. You know, he wants all of us. He, he's a consuming fire. He wants all of us. He is concerned about the nitty gritties, not just the major problems or the major awesomeness in our life. He is concerned about the day-to-day, minute ridiculousness. He wants to be involved in everything. And so, huh, I'm, 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 still, I'm still working all this stuff out, even w- within myself. Uh so uh, God is all-knowing, and His directions are always right. You know, um, His will, His will is always best. You know, with with me believing Him, I have to believe. You know what I'm saying? That He is all-knowing and that He's always right. And 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 I have to trust that His will is always best in my life. And that's it's easy to say that it really is. But I mean, to, to, to take it in and to live it out isn't as easy. Um, because I know he knows. 
God knows what's coming. He knows the beginning from the end. He wrote my book before he started letting me live it out. And then in a little moment, he's like, hey, don't do that. I'm telling you right now, warning, 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 don't do that. He's telling me that because he loves me. And I'm telling him, I love you too, but I think I know what's best. And he goes, okay. Because he's a gentleman, he let me make my own decision. And I'm still, uh, I'm still dealing with that, you know? Thank the good Lord for some awesome antibiotics and some, what are they called, steroids? I don't like them. I thought I would like them. I don't know if it's roid rage or what, but I'm kind of like a little shaky, a little, little tingy, a little foggy. I don't feel like I'm, you know, I'm just not, you know, I'm not just not right. But anyway, so I want to say this too, is uh, God's commands are expressions of his love nature. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again. God's commands, his commands are his expressions of his love nature. See, when he tells us to do something or to not do something, it's because he's a good father and it's because he loves us. You know what I'm saying? There's times where, where he's silence and, and, and I get the free-for-all to run around dad's house and act a fool and do whatever I want. But then there's times where he says, hey, I need you to take the trash out. And if I do it, the house is clean, everything's great. And if I do it, if I go, well, I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it right now. And guess what? The house is dirty and, 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 and you know, there's this fractured relationship with the father. You know what I'm saying? Because he understands that the trash is full and it needs to go out. And I need to take it out right now, not tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I, I use that analogy because uh, trash piles up in my house, my temple. Trash piles up in my temple. Attitudes, frustrations, aggravations. And, and, and if I don't constantly lay these things before the Lord, when he says, hey, you need to take the trash out, and I don't take the trash out, now, you know what I'm saying? Now, now, when, now when my wife asks me to do the dishes, I can't do it uh, out of the goodness of my heart because I'm mad and frustrated. <laughs> you, know what, you get what I'm saying? We have got to do with the things that the Lord asks us to do, whether good or bad. And sometimes he says, don't do that. And he's not, he's not being a party pooper. He, he just knows what's in our best interest. You know, he's a good father. So God's commands are an expression of his love nature. In Deuteronomy 10, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, God declares that his commands are good for us. He says, what does the Lord your God ask you but to fear the Lord your God to walk in all of his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. And again, it, I just smile. I just, I just smile. But Rod up here in his opening prayer right there specifically said, Lord, just that you would let us to love you with all of our hearts and with all of our minds and all of our souls. I mean, it just, God is so awesome, man. He loves us all so much. And, and as much as, as mature as, or immature as any of us are, he never stops pushing us for better, for, for, for bringing us to a, to a new level of understanding, a, a, from, from glory to glory, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept. You know, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I've only caught a little tiny piece. I, I need to visit with my brother, but I heard through the grapevine that a, maybe a little prophetic word kind of came forth uh, to this body. And, and of course, I had a little bit of time to ask the Lord. I don't got the details, so I really need to uh, hear some of this stuff. But I did, I did catch one of the little tiny uh, uh, scripture verses, and I believe it was uh, Hebrews chapter 6, you know, maybe verses 1 through 3 about, about getting away. You know, how, how long? How long are we going to go over the things we already know? How long are we going to go over salvation and repentance from sin and staying away from How long before we walk into the deeper things with the Lord? And again, I'm, I'm searching all that out, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. But when I, when I heard just even that little piece, it wasn't just instruction. I felt a tiny little bit of tinge of, of rebuke. And I find myself going, Father, that you would forgive me 
for just staying in elementary school and not moving up into middle school. You know what I'm saying? That's what a father wants. Do you, do you all have children or grandchildren or, or you know, little people? And, and you watch them and you're like, man, these guys, he is, they, they have mastered the ability to crawl. I wish he would start walking. And you get what I'm saying? Or maybe we don't want them to walk because they get into a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, just God is so, he's so good. God, you're so good. So good. So uh, when God gives a commandment, he is not restricting me, but he's freeing me. He's freeing me. This past week, the Father showed me that when I have an obedience problem, I actually have a love problem. And uh, and, and, and you guys know, I mean, I, I, ooh, man, I've been, I've been trying to learn and figure some stuff out. And, and, and uh, I got myself wrapped up in, in so, many, so many books and, and just the Bible and, you know, philosophies and theologians and all of this, you know, rabbis and, and I mean, so much stuff I'm trying to figure out so much stuff out, and I, and, I, and I jotted this down. I said, if I tried to summarize the entire Old Testament, it would be in, expressed in these verses. These verses are Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. And it says, and it says uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. If I was to try to sum up the Old Testament, that's what I would say. And, and, and what's awesome is this is also the heart cry of God expressed throughout not only the Old Testament, but it's the essence of the New Testament as well. That's the essence of the, that's, that's what he's trying to tell us in the Old Testament, and that is the essence of what he's revealing to us through the New Testament. You know, what's awesome is, is I didn't even just take that for myself, it's it's actually quoting from Deuteronomy. Is, well, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said that. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all of your mind. He, he, he actually made that statement in Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 30. He said that this, if he was to sum it all up into one, it, it is this. And I'm telling you, there is an expression of our love for God. His expression to us is his commands, whether that's as simple as go here, go there, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. That is his expression of love for us to be his children, to be sons and daughters of the Most High. Because again, I don't know if any of y'all ever had kids or grandkids or nothing, but they tend to get into things that will harm them. And we do too. Well, maybe I can't say we, I do too. <laughs> I get into things that tend to harm me that I just don't seems good, but then ultimately the end of it is not good. And so uh, I want to I want to wrap up with a couple of these a uh, couple statements here, and it's it's uh, it's everything in your Christian life, everything about knowing Him, everything about experiencing Him, everything about knowing His will. All depends on the quality of your love relationship with God. That's, that's big. That, I, that's big. Everything in your life, everything, in your Christian life, in your secular life, whatever you want to call it, everything in your life, everything in your life, everything about knowing Him, everything about experiencing Him, this is the kicker. Everything about knowing His will. Everything about knowing His will. I only know Susie's will by spending ridiculous amounts of time with her. Way more than I probably should, because the fish need me. <laughs> but I know what Susie likes and what she doesn't like and where she wants to eat. Guys, that's amazing. Where she wants to eat. I know where she wants to eat. I know so much stuff about Susie. I know her will because of the time that I spend with her. No different with God. It's no different than, than God. You know, uh, but all of that stuff, it, it all depends on the quality of our love relationship with Him. You know, a love relationship with God is more important than any other single factor in our lives. Out of that stems everything. If I love Him good, I love my wife good. If I love Him good, I love my kids good. If I'm having a problem with the way that me and my kids are responding to one another with love, it's probably my love relationship with Him. 
If I have a problem with my love relationship with my spouse, if me and her are just bumping heads ridiculously over nothing because I'm right and she's wrong all the time, <laughs> or maybe the other way around, you know, if, if, if that's the case, if we are having any kind of altercation, it generally stems out of my love relationship with God. You know, we're, we're having an amazing little marriage class over here every Sunday morning. It is so awesome. And, and we are learning how to lay down our lives for one another. We're learning how to put myself second and put my wife first. And I hope that she's learning how to put herself second and me first. You know what I'm saying? It's no different. When I put my love relationship with him first, all this other stuff benefits from it. And, 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 and our relationships with friends, our relationships with sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, uncles, uh, grandchildren, um, all of that stuff, you can always chalk any hiccup back to your love relationship with the Father. Not only giving our obedience to Him, but also receiving His commands to us. It's, it's a two-way relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, when, think about it. You, you know, your you spouse is in here. There's, there's nothing more gratifying than give and take with your spouse. You do something good for her, she does something good for you. You do, I don't know about y'all, but let me tell you, when I do something bad for Susie, I know it, because she does something bad for me. <laughs> and, and, it, and it can turn into this crazy, vicious cycle if we're not careful. Where and when do we hit the reset button and go, okay, Lord, I probably should have not did what you told me to not do, but I did it anyway. And will you forgive me? And he was like, I'm going to forgive you, but not with that attitude. And then I get to go back again, and I'm like, okay, Lord, for real this time. <laughs> he knows our heart. I mean, we can't, we can't get off with these snide little, okay, whatever. Might work for my, my, my bride, but it don't work for the Lord. Um, so, uh, you know, the love relationship with God, it's our most important thing, more than any other single factor in our life, and, and we got to get this if that is not settled, nothing in our life will be right. Think about that. If your love relationship with the Father is messed up at all, it filters into every area of your life. It filters into your job. It filters into your friendships. It filters into, you know, my, my relationships with the people at the food pantry. You know, all these little clubs or things that we do to, to help out and love our community and love our brothers and sisters. When our love relationship with God is broken in any way, it affects everything. It affects everything. So uh, everything that God says and does is an expression of his love for us. And I just want you guys to know that God created you for a love relationship with himself. That's the whole purpose of all this. And, and, and when we go back to the basics, when we go back to loving God, loving God well, miracles will flow. Miracles will flow. When we go back to loving God well, salvations occur. You know, when we go back to loving God well, prophetic words come forth. Healings happen. We see all of these things. But I just want to caution everybody that, please again understand that that stuff is all just a byproduct of our relationship with Him. If we get wrapped up and focused on those things and neglect our love for the Father, Things get a little funny, and not good funny either. I, I, I'm an example of that. I promise. <laughs> As, uh, I love to, you know, who doesn't want to give an encouraging word, or who doesn't want to receive an encouraging word, or who doesn't want to heal the sick person, or who doesn't want to see the mirror? You know what I'm saying? Of course. But when I neglect my love for Him, and I chase those things without Him, this doesn't work. Or... It does kind of work because of his mercy or his grace. Then it all gets burned up at the end. You know, when he goes, I didn't authorize that. You did that on your own. <laughs> you left me out of that. But some of the stuff he's showing me is so awesome that, that I think because I'm a servant of God that I need to go to God, I need to get instructions from him, and then I need to go accomplish what he told me to do. That's what it sounds about right, doesn't it? That's what a servant of God does. Mm, not exactly. Because I left him there, and he wanted to come do it through me. 
He didn't want me to do nothing for him. He wanted to do something with me, for me, and through me. So when did I ever go, God, I want to give them a prophetic word to advance your kingdom? And he goes, hey, buddy, you left me out of the equation. You know, a servant of God has nothing to do with doing anything for him. That's just the byproduct of the relationship with him. So I just want to try to encourage you guys. I just want to share with you guys some of the cool stuff that the Lord has been showing me that, that while our hearts might be right or our intentions might be good, sometimes we just need to take a step back and go, Lord, help me to love you. Lord, help me to be loved by you. Help me to love you. And in these things, all the other stuff will happen. It will. And, and, and I, I, I've, I'm, I already see, I, I'm so happy, you know, that we are where we are, you know, as a church now, but I'm also so excited about where we're going. It is so awesome to see the relationships beginning to blossom and, and healing beginning to take place and restoration beginning to take place and understanding. We, we're, we're coming to a place where we give each other understanding again. And we give grace for each other's faults. And we, and, and, and we don't think that we're this or we're that or da-da-da-da-da-da. It is the Lord is beginning again to move. And, and you know that that happened, that happened, or is happening again on the backs of repentance. Lord, we're sorry that we thought we had it right, but we was off just a little. And we asked that you would get us back on track. Lord, I, I thought we were doing awesome with trying to do salvations and prophetic words and telling everybody to stay away from sin and not do good and not do evil. And then I catch a glimpse of a prophetic word of a young lady. And the Lord goes, them things are great, but I have better. Let's go to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Can, can we do that? Can we, are we willing to go to the next level with the Father? He's, listen, he is an extending, he's extending an invitation. You know what I'm saying? As, as Miss Glenna was sharing, you know, uh, that, that, that this generation, you know, is going to experience, the, the, the previous generations have laid foundation for us to come into fullness of walking with the Father. And, and you know, every generation ha has had an extent, you know, has, has had a degree of a fullness, but we got to keep moving toward the goal. We got to keep pressing on to our love relationship with God and allowing his kingdom to be advanced through relationship first with him and with one another second. Okay? You guys know, when, when, when the rabbi asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? He said, well, you know what the word says. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. I struggle with that. I, I don't love myself good at times. When I don't love myself good, I dang sure don't love other people good. Love your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes I love myself pretty good and I neglect my brother and sister. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to say that uh, God loves you and he, he, he uses any and all situations and circumstances to teach us, to encounter us, to love us, and to advance his kingdom. And so, uh, again, I want to thank you guys for praying for me. I want to thank you guys for loving, it, loving me, even when you don't understand me. And, and, and I hope that I can extend the same for you guys. I mean, everybody has a part. Everybody has a part. Every little tiny word of encouragement, any tiny prayer request, you know what I'm saying? That's what all of us are here for. You know, we're here because we want to love God and we want to love each other. And so, uh, with that being said, let's just take a minute to pray. Um, I want to. I want to close in prayer. And uh, and uh, if you got kids, you can you can go pick them up and in, in just a minute. <laughs> but uh, just bow your heads and close your eyes and. And Father, we just, we just thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the life that you're, we thank you for the breath that you've placed in our lungs, Heavenly Father. Lord, we enter into your courts with praise and thanksgiving. And Lord, we thank you for the things that you were constantly doing in our lives. We thank you for the positive things as well as the negative things. Lord, we thank you that you were constantly working everything out to make us better versions of ourselves. We thank you that you've made us in your image. 
And Lord, we ask that you would help us to, to refocus our sights on our love relationship with you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would restore the broken relationships that we have with, with friends, with family, with, with sons, with daughters, with co-workers. Lord, I ask that you would begin the restoration process. Lord, I ask that you would place a spirit of humility upon us where we would think better of our brothers and sisters than ourselves. Lord, I ask that you would place a, a burden on our hearts to lift each other up in prayer. Lord, I ask that you would help us to truly understand and grasp that we are going to experience you in the advancement of your kingdom through our love relationship with you first and foremost. Lord, I ask that you would, you would help us to fan the flames that once burned so brightly for you, Heavenly Father. Lord, help us to press into you, help us to love one another, and help us to love you.